Have you ever wanted to make your 3D printed parts look like they're made of real metal? If you're a millionaire, you can just go and buy a printer that prints real metal. You can paint your prints with metallic paints that never quite looks right. You could use metal filled filaments. Same thing, they tarnish, they age like real metal, but after hours of sanding and polishing, they still don't look right not to mention nozzle wear and other problems they can cause for your 3D printer. But what if you could coat your 3D print with a layer of real metal using just a few household chemicals and a bit of electricity? It sounds complicated, right? Actually it's not, and today I'm going to show you how you can do it. In this video I'm going to cover a process that's called electroplating. Today we'll cover copper because it's the easiest metal to do this with and it's also used as a base coat for other metal electroplating. So you might coat something in copper before you are going to nickel plate it or chrome it. There's different chemical processes you can use for this but we're going to stick to what I believe is the safest and cheapest way that you can do so. For the electroplating process you're going to need some strong white vinegar, some hydrogen peroxide, some scrap copper, and some batteries or a benchtop power supply that you can adjust the voltage of. Also, for coating your 3D printed object, you're going to need some graphite powder and some alcohol, or some conductive paint. While we're working with rather mild chemicals, I still recommend wearing safety glasses and gloves for this process. Before we can plate anything, we need to create our electrolyte. This is a liquid that allows copper ions to flow from our scrap copper, which is called an anode, to the part that we intend to copper plate, which is called the cathode. In your microwave safe container, mix roughly 50% vinegar with 50% hydrogen peroxide. Then we'll microwave it till it's roughly 40 degrees Celsius or 105 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about the temperature of a really hot bath. We then add our scrap copper to it and leave it for at least a few hours. The acetic acid in the vinegar reacts with the copper and it creates copper acetate, which is why the mixture is turning blue. I generally leave this overnight to fully react, but a few hours is generally long enough. Don't use all of your vinegar in this step because we'll need some more of it later. Any electroplating process requires that the surface of the object that you wish to plate be electrically conductive. The vast majority of 3D printing plastics are not electrically conductive. There are two methods I'll show you to make the surface of your 3D printed part conductive so it can be electroplated. The first method is just using conductive paint and the second method involves making a paste out of graphite powder and alcohol. Before using any of the following methods, your part needs to remain completely clean, so free of fingerprints, dust, grease, oil, etc. I've found this silver conductive paint to be the best method for making 3D prints conductive. It paints on very easily and its resistance is incredibly low, which is highly desirable for electroplating. To use it, just simply paint it on. Try and get a nice even coat of the paint on your part. It's probably best to do at least two coats to get full coverage, as no copper will bond to any of the areas that are unpainted. The reason this paint works so well is that it contains real silver, which is the most conductive metal. This also makes the paint very expensive. This little tiny vial cost me almost $20, so it's not really viable for extremely large plating jobs. The next method we'll use involves making a paste out of graphite powder and alcohol. When I say alcohol, a wide range of solvents can be used for this very commonly used as isopropyl alcohol or acetone. I prefer to use ethanol or methylated spirits because they take slightly longer to evaporate. Graphite powder is most commonly used as a dry lubricant and can be purchased from hardware stores or automotive stores. Creating the paste is very simple. Add a small amount of graphite and a small amount of alcohol to a container and mix thoroughly. You'll be aiming to get the consistency of an acrylic paint, so if the mixture is too runny, add more graphite. If the mixture is too thick, add more alcohol. Once you've got the mixture right, you just simply paint it on. Try and apply a smooth, light coat of the graphite paste. 
It fills small gaps and filament lines quite easily, but don't put it on too thick as it tends to crack off the part when it dries. At this point it's incredibly important to keep the part clean, so don't handle it with your bare hands. Any oils from your fingers will prevent the copper from sticking to the part. Now that we've created our electrolyte and our part is prepped for plating, the fun can actually begin. Half fill a non-metallic container with the electrolyte mixture we created before. Then fill the rest of the container with vinegar. Hang your scrap piece of copper on the edge of the container so the majority of it is submerged in the electrolyte, but there's still enough exposed for you to connect wires to. Wrap your 3D printed part rather loosely in some copper wire and connect it to the negative terminal of your power supply. Then connect the scrap copper to the positive terminal of your power supply. Submerge the printed part in the electrolyte solution and keep moving it constantly. Check on your part periodically. You should start to see bright pink copper forming on your part in less than a minute. If you start getting dark patches or what look like burnt patches on your part, either decrease your power supply's voltage or move the part further away from the scrap copper. Overall, the process should only take a few minutes, but the longer you keep your part submerged, the thicker the copper plating will end up being. Once you're happy the part is completely copper plated, remove it from the solution, wash it with some clean water and dry it immediately. Once it's dry, the copper can be polished or just left as it is. Raw copper will oxidize very quickly, so if you want it to keep its shine, you should clear coat it with some varnish or otherwise you can just leave it exposed to the elements to get a natural aged look. And there you have it, a nice simple and safe method to make your printed parts look like they're really made of copper. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video, and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more content like this. I'm Brody. happy printing.